Yes, guys, turn to question number 24. I'm sorry, 25. Question number 25. The following is the balance sheet of Rampal Limited as on 31st March 2012. There are some 1 lakh shares, equity shares of 10 rupees each and 10,000 12% preference shares of 100 rupees each. Following are the assets given to you and come down below. Nominal value of investments is 5, 5 lakhs and its market value is 5 lakh 20. The following assets were revalued. Building, plan, stock and trade and debtors is giving you the valuations of these assets. The average profits before tax for the company is 12 lakhs and 12.5% of the profits are transferred to general reserve after a taxation of 50%. Normal dividend expected on equity shares is 8% while the fair return on closing capital employed is 10%. Goodwill may be valued at 3 years purchase of super profits. Ascertain the value of share based on fair value method. So, first for the valuation of share, we need to go for valuation of goodwill. Goodwill is to be valued at 3 years purchase of super profits. That is what he said. So, to find out super profits, what do we need? We need FMP, we need average capital employed and we need NRR. NRR is given to you. NRR, fair return on closing capital employed is 10%. I don't take that 8% because that 8% is for equity shares. So we need to take this 10% thing because it is a fair return on closing capital employed. You can start, you can take that as NRR. For calculating your FMP has given you one particular detail. Average profit before tax of a company is 12 lakhs. So this information can be used for calculating your FMP. This is average profit before tax. You need to first deduct tax. Then you can have calculations of the remaining thing. He is also saying that 12.5% of the profits are transferred to general reserve. So whenever they are transferred to general reserve, such amount is not available to equity shareholders at all. Now come to the investment part. Investment in 10% stock, 4,18,000. Nominal value of these investments is 5 lakhs and market value is 5 lakh 20. He hasn't given anything regarding whether these investments are trade investments or non-trade investment. So let's try to consider it as non-trade investment and let's start solving the problem. So put on heading FMP. Assuming the investments are non-trade, you can assume even the other way around saying that they are trade investments, I don't mind for that. Start with your average profits. Average profit before tax. Before giving the tax adjustment, let's give the return on non-trade investments. Less return on non-trade investments. Return on non-trade investments, 10% is the sh return it yields because in the investments he clearly wrote investment in 10% stock. On the nominal value which is given to us below in the point number 1 as 5 lakhs. Point number A, nominal value of investments is 5 lakhs. This will give me 50,000 return on non-trade investments. This will be average trading profits. Average trading profits before tax is 11 lakhs 50,000. Then deduct tax. Less tax at the rate of 50%. 
फाइव लैख सेवेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड एवरेज ट्रेडिंग प्रॉफिट्स आफ्टर टैक्स इज फाइव लैख सेवेंटी फाइव यू कैन कंसिडर दिस एज एफ एम पी एज वेल बिकॉज इट इज ऑलरेडी गिवन एज आफ्टर टैक्स दर इज नो फर्दर एडजस्टमेंट विच आर सपोज टू बी मेड बट गाइज लेट स्टार्ट यूजिंग द अदर एडिशनल इन्फॉर्मेशन दैट ही एज गिवन ही सेइंग दैन In point number C, 12.5 percent of the reserve of profit is transferred to general reserve. There is one appropriation. The second appropriation, which compulsory should be made, is regarding preference dividend because there are 12 percent preference dividend. After I transfer something to the general general reserve and also to the preference dividend, the balance profits available is towards equity shareholders. Let's try to identify that additional information because. The ascertain. He clearly asked you in the last sentence. Ascertain the value of equity share as per fair value method. So whenever it comes to fair value method, I need to take net assets value. I also need to take dividend yield value and take an average of that. To get a dividend yield value, I don't have what is the dividend per share. Dividend share. Dividend yield value is dividend per share divided by NRR. NRR is given. Equity shares NRR is eight percent. But I need dividend per share, which is not given to me. So I'll start. Taking the appropriations less appropriations. My first appropriation is towards general reserve. Twelve point five percent. and my second appropriation is towards preference dividend preference dividend is 12% of 10 lakhs five lakh 75000 into 12 and a half percent is Seventy-one thousand eight seventy-five, and preference dividend is one lakh twenty thousand. Two appropriations deduct. The balance should be profit available to equity shareholders, or I'll call it as average profits. Average profits available to equity shareholders. Three eighty three one twenty five divided by the number of shares my number of shares in the question is one lakh so average earnings per share. Or average EPS is equal to three point eight three. I'm just rounding it off. I divide it by the NRR. Automatically, I'll get what is the value per share. I don't need to do first. Let's take it up towards the last. Let's start using this FMP. We need to also get average capital employed. Guys, can I calculate average capital employed? To get average capital employed, I need at least two years. Not given. Closing is given, so I need half of current year profits. Do I have current year profits anywhere? The profits given to me is average profit. That is not current year profit. So what we can calculate from this question is only closing capital employed. And if you observe, even in point number D, very clearly he wrote fair return on closing capital employed is 10 percent. He never asked you to find out average. So let's try to calculate closing capital employed or terminal capital employed. Both mean the same terminal or closing.
terminal capital employed let's start considering my sh first first asset i can't use goodwill for goodwill calculation so i'll start with buildings fair valuation given to you in the next page 32 lakhs second asset plant fair valuation given in the previous in the next page 18 lakhs third asset i can't consider investment because we have taken it as non trade investments next one is stock given to me valuation is 4 lakh 50 Datas fair valuation is three lakh sixty, and finally we have a cash balance of one lakh. Fifty-nine lakh ten thousand is your total assets. Come to the outside liabilities. My first outside liability is your creditors. There is no fair valuations given. You can directly observe the book values itself as fair values. Eight lakhs. Next, the debentures. Fifteen percent debentures given to me. Debentures is ten lakhs. That's it. Total liability is eighteen lakhs, and my capital employed, my closing capital employed or terminal capital employed, is forty one lakh ten thousand. Let's go for the valuation of goodwill then. Using super profits method, how do we get super profit? You know the NRR, you know the capital employed. Multiply the NRR with the capital employed, we'll get normal profits. Compare it with the FMP, we'll get super profits. What is the NRR given to you? NRR on capital employed is given to us as 10%. So let me start with the FMP. FMP, what we already calculated is 5 lakh 75 thousand. Deduct normal profits from this. Ten percent of closing capital employed, four lakh eleven thousand. We can identify super profits from this. One lakh sixty sixty-four thousand. Goodwill is three years purchase. Four lakh ninety-two thousand. Is the value of goodwill? First, you need to calculate value per share on net assets basis. Starting with the closing capital employed, always we have three adjustments. One is goodwill. Second one, non-trade investment. Third one, preference share capital and preference dividend. Anyways, there is no preference dividend given in the question, so you don't have to take that. Take only preference share capital. 
this preference dividend what we deducted is not to be paid. There is just an average average profits. We are trying to calculate what is average earnings per share. You don't have to think that it is unpaid. There is nothing given in the balance sheet as a liability. That means you don't have to deduct a preference dividend at all. Net asset value per share. Start with your closing capital employed. We already calculated the closing capital employed as 41 lakhs 10,000. First adjustment, goodwill, add goodwill to this. 4 lakhs 92,000. Then add non-trade investments. Value of non-trade investments take it at market value. Market value is 5 lakhs 20. Then finally deduct less preference share capital. Preference share capital given in the question is 10 lakh. I'm sorry guys, non-trade investment should be added. Preference share capital of 10 lakh should be deducted. This will give us net assets attributable to equity shareholders. Net assets attributable to equity shareholders. Deduct and we'll get the answer of 41 lakhs 22,000 divided by number of equity shares. One lakh, and that's it. We get the answer of net assets value per share. Net asset value per share is 41.22 To get fair value we need to take an average of the yield based method yield base I have earnings yield to be calculated value per share earnings yield method how do you calculate earnings per share Divided by NRR. You know earnings per share, average earnings per share is 3.83. NRR, check what is the NRR of equity shares? 8%. And the value per share is 47.875. Divided by 8% or divided by 8 into 100. Now we have two values per share. Guys check, does it make any difference if I take it as 383125? Let's take the full values. 38125. Divided by 8%. We rounded off there. So I think this will change. This will become 8.9. So doesn't make any difference. So get the fair value. 
फेयर वैल्यू पर शेयर इज इक्वल टू नेट एसेट वैल्यू पर शेयर प्लस अर्निंग यील वैल्यू पर शेयर डिवाइडेड बाई टू फोर्टी वन पॉइंट टू टू नेट एसेट वैल्यू फोर्टी सेवन पॉइंट एट नाइन अर्निंग यील वैल्यू डिवाइडेड बाई टू दल गिव यू डबल फोर पॉइंट ट्रिपल फाइव फोर्टी फोर पॉइंट फाइव 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 इज अ फेयर वैल्यू पर शेयर Turn to the next one. Question number twenty-six. The following is the balance sheet of N Limited as on thirty-first March two thousand nine. A balance sheet with equity shares as well as preference shares, which is given to you, and come down below. Return on capital employed is twenty percent for a similar business. Fixed assets are worth thirty percent more than the book value. And stock is overvalued by one lakh. Debtors are to be reduced by twenty thousand. Trade investments, which constitute to ten percent of the total investments, were valued at ten percent below cost. Trade investments were purchased on one four two thousand eight, and fifty percent of the non-trade investment being purchased on one four two thousand seven. Rest purchased on one four zero six. Non-trade investment yield a return of fifteen percent on the capital on the return on cost. In 2006-7, a new machinery costing two lakhs was purchased, but wrongly charged to revenue. This amount was adjusted, taking should be adjusted, taking into depreciation at the rate of 10% on a reducing balance method. Furniture having a book value of one lakh was sold for 60,000 in the year 2006-7-8. For the purpose of calculating goodwill, two years purchase of super profits based on simple average profits of last four years should be considered. He clearly gave a simple average of profits to be considered. For the last four years, profits are given to you. Additional depreciation at the rate of 10% on the additional value of plant and machinery alone may be considered for arriving at average profits. Calculate the intrinsic value of equity share. A similar problem we have already solved with a change in the figures. So let's try to do this quicker. Find a lot of such questions as far as your exams are concerned, guys. Again, we need to start with valuation of goodwill because goodwill is two years purchase of super profits. For valuation of goodwill, my first determinant is FMP. I need to start with that again. For the purpose of FMP, what is the basis he has given in point number six? We have four years averages: two thousand five, six, six, seven, seven, eight, and eight, nine. However, there are some adjustments to the profits as well. So let's start at the corrected profits. Let's maintain those columns. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eight, nine. these are profits given there's no tax impact which is specified so you can ignore tax I'm writing it beside it ignoring taxation
Go on. Profits given to us are 16 lakhs. Eighteen lakhs, twenty-one and twenty-two. Let's give adjustments to this first one. Come in the order. Uh, so let's get the corrected profit. So get the corrections first. Fix this at thirty percent more than the book value. That has nothing to correct, correct with the profits. Stock is overvalued. That should be on the balance sheet date. So stock should be the first adjustment. Stock is overvalued by 1 lakh. That means I have to bring it down by 1 lakh. To be overvalued, then I would have increased it. But is overvalued. That means stock is already high. I have to bring it down. Debtors. To be reduced by 20,000. Another correction to the profit. Return on non-trade investments is there. But I will consider that only as an adjustment for FMP. Not for the corrected profits. I have one more correction to the profits given there. In point number 4. Machinery. Wrongly charged to PNL, or they call it as wrongly charged to revenue. Which year? 2006-7, second year. What is the cost? 2 lakhs. Increase the profit by 2 lakhs that because you must have reduced it when you charged it to PNL. Now, what we need to reduce is the amount of depreciation on this. Depreciation rate is given to us as 10% on WDB basis. Come on. First year, I'll start with the first year itself. Reduce by 20,000, 18,000, 16,200. These are the depreciation impacts on the machinery. 20,000 minus 10%, 18,000, 18,000 minus 10%, 16,200. Any other correction to the profit given? No. The next one is a loss on sale of furniture. That is also an FMP adjustment because it's a non-recurring item. These are corrected profits. Sixteen lakhs. 19 lakhs 20, 20 lakh 82, 19 lakh 80. This is last one is 20 lakhs 63,800. Now come to the FMP adjustments. What are the FMP adjustments? I have two adjustments now. One is return on non-trade investment. Other one is your non-recurring loss on furniture. Return on non-trade investments. Read that point. In the second point, he has given some information saying that the trade investments constituted 10% of the total investments. So out of 16 lakh 10 percent, 1 lakh 60 is trade. Balance 14 lakh 40 is non-trade. Read that. Trade investments are purchased on 1408. Least to bother about it. 50 percent of non-trade investments were purchased on 142007. Rest purchased on 1406. So out of 14 lakh 40, 7 lakh 20 is purchased on 1406. Balance 7 lakh 20 purchased on 142007. It yields a return of 15% on the total cost. So for 142006 you purchased. So it will come for the year 2006-7. For calculation we need to take 15% return on half of the non-trade investment 7,20,000. 15% return on half of 7,20,000 is 1,8,000.
Next year it should be 2,16,000 because he must have purchased the remaining half as well. First half yields a return, even the second half yields a return. It is still there on the balance sheet date, so continue even for the third year. Next adjustment is non-recurring loss on furniture. Abnormal losses guys, those are 2007-8, last before year, add back your profits by 40,000. So get the profits, first year again no change, 16 lakhs. Second year is 18,72,000. Third year is 19,6,000. Final year is 18 lakhs. He asked you to take a simple average of these profits. Average profits. How much is the average profit? Take a simple average of these profits guys. Eighteen lakh six thousand four fifty. Only one adjustment before we get the FMP. That is your point number seven. Additional depreciation of ten percent on the additional value of plant and machinery. Depreciation on revaluation. of plant and machinery the book value of the plant and machinery already given is 22 lakhs plus the machinery which was wrongly charged to revenue now considered check 2 lakhs was the value of the machinery you already depreciated it by 3 years I think this is 145,800. Upward revaluation being 30%. My depreciation on this being 10%. 30% upward revaluation given in point number 2. And again point number 7 will give you a rate of additional depreciation at the rate of 10%. 22 lakhs book value. Plus the machinery which is wrongly charged to revenue now bought into accounts after depreciation is 1,45,800. 30% upward revaluation at 10% is 7037. and this is your FMP. Seventeen lakhs thirty six thousand seventy six rupees.
that gives your FMP get the capital employed next. I need average capital employed. Let's start with the closing. Assets. Go one by one. First asset is building. Upward revalued by 30%. 24 lakhs plus 30% is 7 lakhs 20. 31 lakhs 20 thousand. Machinery already existing twenty two lakhs plus new the additional machinery what we have got which was wrongly charged revenue earlier one forty five eight hundred plus thirty percent add thirty percent to that. I guess 30% is some 7 lakhs 3740 I guess 30 lakhs 49,000 is the value of the machinery after the revaluation number C furniture again increase it by 30% again 10 lakhs, 30% increase will give you 13 lakhs. Vehicles also should be upward revalued. Vehicles is 18 lakhs, 30% is 5 lakh 40, 23 lakh 40,000. Only trade investments considered. Read that point number 2. Trade investments are 10% of the total investment. 16 lakhs total investment, 10% is 1,60,000. Should be valued 10% below cost. 1,60,000 minus 10% is 1,44,000. Stock, we have reduced it by 1 lakh. It is upward revalued is what he said. Stock should be 10 lakhs. Debtors reduced by 20,000, 17 lakh 80,000. Bank balance does not have any change, 3 lakh 20. Preliminary expenses won't be considered, taken as the revaluation, sorry, its realizable value is 0. Outside liabilities to be considered now. First of the outside liability is my creditors. Thirty one lakhs. Bills payable six lakhs. Bank loan twelve lakhs. That's it for your outside liabilities. No further outside liabilities given there. Total outside liability is forty nine lakhs. Information sufficient to calculate closing capital employed. To get average, less half of current year profits. Current year corrected profits is what we have to take. You have corrected profits. Half of 2063800.
Finally, average capital employed. Total of assets is 1 crore 30 lakhs. 53,540. This one will be 81,53,540. Is your average capital employee? You know average capital employed, you know FMP, there is an RR given to you in the first bit. First point, further information, 20% is the NRR. So you can calculate goodwill. Goodwill is 2 years purchase of super profits. Goodwill by super profits method. Put up simple calculations from your... Start with your FMP, 17,36,076, normal profits, you need to multiply it with the NRR and, and your normal cap, uh, average capital employed. Twenty percent of this is fourteen lakhs twenty four thousand three twenty eight. Comparing these two, we get super profit of three lakh eleven thousand seven forty eight. Goodwill is 2 years purchase. Six lakhs You can round it off to 500. 4 rupees doesn't make much difference. Four rupees does not make any difference, guys. You can make this as 623,500. Again, to calculate net assets value or intrinsic value, we need three adjustments from closing capital employee. Goodwill, non-trade investments, preference share capital. Remember those three. That is sufficient. There is no preference dividend payable at all. Nothing even in the question, so don't assume anything. Intrinsic value per share, that's what we are asked to calculate. Let's start with the closing capital employee. Closing capital employee, 81.53,540. Plus goodwill, we just calculated as six, sorry, six twenty-three five hundred. Non-trade investments also to be added. Clearly gave total investments ten percent trade, ten percent trade out of sixteen lakhs, one lakh sixty. Balance is non-trade. 1440. He never said this is 10% lower. He just said trade investments are valued 10% lower. So this I am taking at book value. non end investments taken at book value. Then deduct preference share capital. Preference share capital is 20 lakhs. This 
this will give you 82 lakhs 17,040 this is net assets attributable to equity shareholders divided by number of equity shares and we get intrinsic value per share IV per share number of equity shares is 4 lakhs or oh, this is Yes guys, so let's go for the next one. 27. Last problem for valuation on shares. Then we can go for valuation of a business. Summarize balance sheet of Precious Limited as on 31st December 2011 is as follows. There is some balance sheet which is given to you with equity shares as well as preference shares. Profits for the year 2019-11 after charging debenture interest and tax but before providing the preference dividend is 2,20,000, 2,2500, 3,22,500 and 2,40,000 respectively. Preference shares are payable at par on liquidation. The purchaser wants to acquire the entire 4,500 equity shares. The price for the equity share is based on the following assumptions. The normal return on net assets at a revised valuation attributable to equity shares is only 10%. Debentures will be redeemed at a discount of 25% prior to the sale of the business. In order to provide funds for this purpose, in order to provide funds for this purpose, investments are to be sold out. The value of a of a free freehold property is agreed to be ascertained at 8% return on current annual rental value of 50,400. A claim of 8,250 omitted to be provided in the year 2011. Market value of the quoted investments is 3,75,000. Non-recurring profits to be to be eliminated. 10% of the profits of 2010 are referred to be of a transaction of non-recurring nature. A provision of 5% on debtors is to be made or uh, already made in 2011 is no longer required. The provision made can be taken into purpose with an income tax rate of. 50%. So, how many are the adjustments to current year profits check? 
from the current year profits, the first adjustment that I have is regarding your claim. Debentures has nothing to do with your current year profits, free old property, increase or decrease not to do with your current year profit. What we have, the first item to change the profits is claim, 8250 omitted in the year 2011. Market value of quoted investments is 3,75,000. We are not bothered about that because that will not increase my profits in any manner. My non-recurring profits of 2010 are 10%. This also has to be eliminated. And current year provision, 5% on data is already maintained. No longer required. This is also an adjustment. So total 3 adjustments to get corrected profits or FMP calculations. Calculate the value of company share for the purpose of purchaser's point of view, taking into account the revised values of assets and liability, value of goodwill is 3 years purchase of super profits on an average profits of the last 3 years. So, from the information given, what we can calculate is only a net assets value. So, let's try to start with that. First, get the corrected profits of the current year and then let's go for the FMP calculations. That what is the current, current year profits of 2011 is 2,40,000. We need to make some adjustments to that. How many years are given to us? 3 years, 9, 10 and 11. Those adjustments are only in 2010 and 11. Let's first calculate. Try to maintain uniformity as far as your working notes is concerned. Profit after tax. This is the values given to us. What are the profits after tax? 2,2500. twenty two five hundred, And finally 2,40,000. This is profit after tax. First get profit before tax. Then we'll give our adjustments. Tax rate is 50%. So exactly profit after tax is half of profit before tax. 4,41,000. 6,45,000. 4,80,000. These are the profit before taxes. First adjustment is claims. In 2011, a claim of rupees. Point number I. Yeah, point there. 8250 claim is omitted. 8250 claim is omitted. Claims will reduce the profits. Another adjustment, provision of 5% on the debtors. Last adjustment that is, made in 2011 is no longer required. Add back the provision. Provision no longer required. Add back. Debtors net is... 2,99,250 given in the balance sheet. That is after deducting a provision of 5%. That means this is 95. How much is 5? 2,99,250 into 5 and 95. 15,750 add back. This should give us corrected profits. There is an adjustment even to 2010, if you observe, which is regarding non-recurring items. Non-recurring items I will deduct after the correction of corrected profits. 
So my corrected profits first year and second year are the same. Corrected profits before tax is what we calculated right now. 4,41, 6 lakhs, 45. Mm, this one is 4,87,500. Non-recurring items. Is it non-recurring profits or losses? Non-recurring profits are to be eliminated. How much is it given? Non-recurring profits is 10% of 2010. 10% of 2010, 64,500. That's it. Eliminate the 64,500 as well. Average profits or you can call this as FMP pre-tax. Average profits before tax is 5,3,000. Is there any adjustment given after the average of profits? Any depreciation on revaluations or something like that? Nothing. So straightforward you can take this as FMP pre-tax, deduct tax, less tax at the rate of 50%. Two lakh fifty one five hundred and you'll get FMP post tax FMP is the same figure as tax two fifty one five hundred. That's it, you got this figure. You know current year profits before tax. No problem, you can calculate after tax as well and then half of it. So let's start calculating your average capital employed. Average of capital employed first calculate closing and then you can calculate your average by deducting half of current year profits. So first go for the closing. First get the closing. Use the balance sheet guys to get the closing capital employed. I'll start with my assets. First I said goodwill I won't consider, I'm valuing goodwill, freehold, freehold property compulsory to be considered, come down below, there's an adjustment for freehold property, it is ascertained to be valued on 8% return on its rental value currently 50,400, 50,400 current rental value divided by 8%. 6 lakhs 30,000. There's the value of freehold property. Next, second one. Plant and missionary. There is no change to the value of plant and missionary at all. You can directly take it as 1 lakh 50. They're quoted investment. Take them as non trade. I'm not considering them by any chance. What else? have stock 
There is no adjustment to stock also, 2,70,000. I have an adjustment for debtors. Add back that 15,750 rupees of provision, you get 3,15,000 rupees of debtors. Bank balance as it is, 3,45,000. Those total assets. Reduce your outside liabilities from this. The first of the outside liability is your creditors, 2,39,250. Claims which we omitted to take into consideration, 8,250. Debentures, 3 lakhs. Guys, one second guys, just a second, observe the debentures point, one second, small changes, debentures will be redeemed at a discount of 25% prior to the sale of the business, in order to provide funds for this purpose, your investments will be sold out, guys, those investments which are given there, quoted investments of 3 lakhs, have to have been sold out, so when you are valuing by the time, these investments were not there. I have luckily not considered that investment, but even the debenture has got redeemed. My debenture has got redeemed. So you can't take it. But, however, your cash will increase because he's selling investments and he's also repaying your debentures. So check your cash balance. Your cash can't be taken as 345. You have to check cash. 3,45,000 already existing. Plus, quoted investments will yield 3 lakhs. There is no sale value given, so I am taking quoted investments as market value. Minus, what you paid to the debentures. I did not pay entire 3 lakhs, I am paying them at a discount of 25%. So, one fourth of 3 lakhs is 75,000 discount. Minus 2 lakhs, 25,000 paid to the debenture holders. Plus 3 lakhs sale of investments. Minus 2 lakh 25 repayment of debentures. So the balance here should be 4 lakhs 20,000. So oh, once again, guys. Yeah, point number J. Market value of quoted investment is 375, guys. Not 3 lakhs. It will yield 3 lakhs 75. It will yield 3 lakhs 75. So this will be. 4,95,000. No debentures as outside liability. You don't have to take it as outside liability at all. We are assuming it to be already paid off. Now total your assets. Eighteen lakh sixty two lakh forty seven five hundred. My closing capital employee one twelve five hundred. Closing capital employed is 16,12,500 to get average deduct half of current year corrected profits 2011 profits Four lakh eighty seven five hundred is not current year profits guys please check 4 lakh eighty seven five hundred is corrected profit before tax 50% tax rate is there 487500 into 50% 
after tax into 1 by 2, half of current year profits. That is nothing but 1 by 4. 1,21,875. Average capital employed. is 14 lakhs 9625 NRR given to you check somewhere NRR should be there Check there guys. Yeah, it is normal return of 10% on net assets attributable to equity shareholders. You can't take this. This is only average capital employed. We need average profits to equity shareholders. So less preference share capital. Reduce preference share capital. 1,50,000. Plus preference share capital, this will give you capital, what is the net assets attributable to equity shareholders. Thirteen forty six twenty five. NRR is 10% of this. Go for the computation of goodwill by super profits method. We know the figures. We know FMP. We know net assets attributable to equity shareholders. We know NRR is 10%. You can start calculating the amounts. Normal profits. 10% on net assets attributable to equity shareholders. 1,34,000. 63 FMP 2,51,500 Super Profit 1,17,437 Check goodwill. Goodwill is 3 years purchase. Three lakhs fifty two thousand. Three double one. That'll give us the value of goodwill. He is asking you the value per share. You know goodwill. You know closing capital employed. So closing capital employed plus 3. Sorry. After that plus goodwill. Plus non-trade investment. There is no non-trade investment. We have already sold it. So it won't appear. <coughs> minus preference share capital. That's it. Identify value per share. Closing capital employed sixteen twelve hundred plus goodwill three fifty two three double one less preference share capital one lakh fifty thousand. 
This is net assets attributable to equity shareholders. Eighteen lakhs fourteen thousand eight double one divided by number of equity shares. I have four thousand five hundred equity shares. Then you get net assets value per share. Net asset value is four not three point two nine. 